Hello everybody, Marty McConnell here, Off Grid Gecko, and this is take 1100 for this video. So today we're going to be making potash, and um, I'm going to try to do this as quickly and effectively as I can. Get away from the camera! Ugh, damn cats. So um, the first thing we're going to do is empty the muck bucket from the last batch. So this is leached ashes. This is the leftovers from the process. So you can see they're in there, they're packed hard. It's kind of like clay. And I'm gonna try and get it out of this muck bucket because we don't wanna, uh, I don't really wanna just get rid of it. So hopefully, ooh, look, sand castles. All right, so that works pretty well. That worked out a lot better than I thought despite the fact that it's freezing. So now, inside my muck bucket, I've got a big old plug of used up, um, ashes and this is going to be mostly calcium carbonate so this is going to be mostly chalk some impurities there's some charcoal in there and some other crap and a little bit of clay it looks like too all right and this is how we make the wood ash so um i got up to 60 degrees today i had a little fire burning in here this morning actually just some coals from last night i just opened this sucker up um, got the house back to warm, roughly. I've got cats knocking on my door. I need to turn this up anyways. Um, so, yeah, got the house warmed up a little bit, and it has pretty much burned itself out. So now it's the best time, one of the best times to collect ashes. And then we out. So this is the first step in making pot ash is of course to gather ashes so put that little joker right there to catch whatever we pull out and we just start pulling this out now you may notice i'm putting this in a metal pot there's a reason for that and the reason for that is that this metal pot will um contain any hot embers coals or anything like that that's still in here Got a lot of good stuff in this one. This actually looks like it's combusted pretty good. But no guarantees so you actually pour the potash and there's some you know, organic matter in there that's not completely burned down in it. But this makes heaps and heaps and heaps of wood ashes. So I try not to um, try not to transfer this straight to a plastic pail unless after this sits for a while, if the pail's still cold, then I'll go ahead and transfer this to my plastic bucket. Okay, plastic bucket for safekeeping until the next time I do a an ash test. Now, my leech bucket outside still has ashes from the last batch in it. And um, they're soaked. And we don't want to throw those out right because we're going to do other stuff with them. Um, so ash is primarily calcium carbonate. Don't let anybody tell you any different, because if they do, they're lying to you. But that's the primary ingredient here. And it's the same ingredient that you would use in, that was made in older chalk. <laughs> or when a geologist talks about chalk, usually they're talking about calcium carbonate. <coughs> I'm going to have to dust in here later. It smells like work. So I'm going to just go ahead and clean this whole guy out. <clears throat> and put all this stuff in the plastic bucket which you can see we got about half of this guy full so that's about two and a half gallons of ash um but anyways this is our leaching bucket and as you can see it has a big old crack in the bottom and what you want to do is drill a bunch of small holes in the bottom so i've got a quarter inch drill bit and i just punched a bunch of holes in this and so between this crack and those holes this thing's going to leak out so we're going to go get our ashes and then we'll set this up over there. Okay, so this is the leaching station. What I've basically done is take two cedar logs here just to kind of sure everything up, keep nimrods from knocking stuff over. This is going to be my collection bucket. Okay, and then the ash bucket I already showed you. So I'm just going to wedge this guy down in here as best as I can. And that way it's sort of propped up. And I need to kind of prop up this front edge of it a little bit too. So let me see if I can find a rock or something. Cool. Hmm. Doesn't need to be very big. So we'll take 
Ugh, this guy. It's always good to have rocks laying around. Just kind of And it's freezing out here today. It is 32 degrees right now, according to my truck. So, um, this is the leach pan. This is going to catch all the water. I've got these little metal grates that come in handy for a lot of things around here. So, one of those would be sitting on top of this. And then our ash bucket will be on top of the side of that. And we'll put the water in the top. And the water will trickle down through the ashes, just like coffee percolating through. Um, coffee grounds yeah, and the water drops into the bucket and that's pretty much all there is to it you don't have to do anything fancy there's no three-day waiting period um, all that nonsense you can do that stuff if you want you could also just put the ashes in a five gallon bucket to about here fill it up with water and let it sit for three or four days come out stir it as often as you can and then pour the water off that would work too um, in general I try to get as much out of the same volume of water as I have ashes, and that seems to work the best for um, for that kind of stuff. And then the depleted ashes, of course, are in that bucket. I'm going to leave it uncovered. That way it can rain on it, and that bucket's cracked up pretty good. So um, the rainwater should carry off any excess, and then I should be left with a fairly pure leftover ashes uh, compound in that bucket, which we'll use later to make lime. But that's another that's another story. So what I am going to do here that's a little different is this. So this is the leftover leachate from the last batch. And what I'm going to do is shake it up really, really well and get all this stuff because it's not entirely dissolved. Um, there's some little clumps of potassium carbonate in there and some salts and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and stir this up and dump that right there in the leach bucket. Now that's not going to affect the ability of the water to pull out those soluble compounds because it's already in here. What it is going to do is it's going to allow me to reuse this last little bit that I couldn't extract for whatever reason. So this is basically the crap that I had to scrape off the bottom of the pot. Um, but now we can reuse it and It'll get mixed with this new batch, and so we're just kind of continuing the process here. Okay, so we'll put our little metal grate. Now, water is about eight pounds per gallon. Ashes are about four pounds per gallon. And from the looks of it, we've got about four and a half gallons of ashes here, so that should be about 18 pounds um, of ash. I actually started weighing this so that I can measure my solution this time, and out of this, you should get anywhere from half a pound to a pound of potassium carbonate. Now when it comes to ash, you're gonna hear people say that you need to use hardwood ash only and do this outside because it makes a lot of um, dust. You wanna use hardwood ash only. Um, I don't know if there's any truth to that at all. There probably is some conventional wisdom caught up in that. Like certain trees are just gonna be better at producing ash than others. Uh, that needs to go in the pile to be cleaned. And the best part about working with this stuff, you just clean it out by rinsing it out with water, basically. Um, but pine trees, especially ponderosa pine, have incredibly high concentrations of potassium in the leftover ash. So don't go just off that softwood versus hardwood. I would say whatever you're burning right now, try some of that and see how it turns out. But it takes a lot of firewood to make four and a half gallons of ashes. And that will give you, like I said, um, close to a pound probably should be reasonable of, uh, of potassium carbonate or this. I'm going to be calling this lye, the stuff that leaches out. Um, now, lye is one of those terms. It's got all these silly little connotations was, uh, tied with it. So chemical lye is um, sodium hydroxide. Okay, that's not what we're making here. We're making just ash lye. And so in this circumstance, lye, the definition that I'm going to be using means that the lye is all the water-soluble components of the ash. So how do we get those water-soluble components out? Well, we got all these holes drilled in this bucket. We're going to take some rainwater, and we're just 
just gonna pour that joker in there. And like I said, you don't need to be super fancy with this. Um, you can use water out of the tap, water out of the faucet. So most of this water, you'll notice there's not water gushing out of the side here. Okay. It actually takes a while. Oh, there it goes gushing out of the side. Oh, a little too much gushing. All right, and now I'm losing some of my concentrate. So yeah, it's going everywhere. It's not going all the way that I had planned. So we're going to have to do something different here. Alright, so packing tape, probably not the best solution in the world, but it seems to be working. And now we're getting little drips out instead of big gushing water flows, so I've probably ate up a good chunk of my ash, and I'll have to factor that in when I get my final yield. But, um, still, it's good. We'll see uh, what comes out of this, and if it's any good or not, and then I'll be saving up for another pile of ash. Um, so, yeah, the stuff that's leaching out of here is called lye it's not the same thing as potassium hydro or sodium hydroxide that you buy from the store and people say oh it's potassium hydroxide well it's not that either these are carbonates that you're going to find mostly in wood ash and the difference with carbonates is they're just with all the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere when a fire is burning it produces lots and lots of carbon dioxide some of that remains behind and it gets stuck with the minerals that are in the plant and it makes uh, lots of carbonates. There's some chlorides in there too. Um, these are not the same ingredients that you buy off the shelf in the store, okay? So the lye that comes out of this process is carbonate and the stuff you buy on the shelf is usually hydroxide. So just keep that in mind that you're not working with um, hydroxide here, you're working with carbonate, which if you know where to find it at the feed store, um, you can actually go and buy lots of potassium carbonate. It's already made, it's really, really cheap. So if you decide you like this kind of soap, but you don't want to put up with the process of making ashes, like potassium carbonate can be found at the feed store or at any local home and garden store. They sell it as fertilizer. So um, just keep that in mind. Like, And I'm sure it's a hell of a lot cheaper than the stuff you're going to get from a soap making company for making soap. So if you like carbonate soaps, this is definitely the stuff for you. And it can be had around... 40 cents a pound, I think, the last I checked. Um, anyways, that's getting long-winded and talkative. So this is basically going to sit here all day, and it's going to leak off, and we'll get back to that a little later. Alrighty. Alright, we're inside, so there's our liquor. Um, and what I've done is scoop some out into a little jar, and we're just going to test this with this little litmus paper here. So as you can see, blue quite blue and that'll give us a pH of around ooh, 10 or 11 um, pH paper is not exactly the most dependable thing in the world it's decidedly blue maybe a little purple so this could be as high as 12 um, but I don't think so I think we're more in the 11 category which is about right you're gonna hear people online quote uh, uh, let me turn this guy around I'm sorry because the place is like kind of messy a little bit, but um, so you're gonna hear people online quote that your lye water needs to be pH 13. Um, first of all, if you test it with a dependable meter and you get pH 13, you let me know because I don't think you're gonna get that no matter how concentrated you get it. This is not sodium hydroxide, again, this is. Um, mainly potassium carbonate. Now, you see the dark color in there? That is the color that you get because of organic impurities in the solution. So when you turn this around, so when you dry it, you're going to get um, a concentrated solution. And the more you dry it off, the closer it's going to get kind of to this. And this is basically um, dried off until the crystals form. And then I separated this off from the first batch. So that's the stuff that I might be using later today to make soap. If I ever get around to trying to make another batch of soap, I still... What you can do is you can take this, the red stuff that I just showed you, um, when it's in crystalline form, if you want to purify it, 
to a higher degree. And the reason I'm looking around is I have a jar of this crap laying here somewhere. I just can't remember where I... Oh. So if you want to purify it to a certain degree and get it to be white, because potassium carbonate should be a white solid. Okay, white crystalline solid, and it's got little traces of green in it also, which I think are, the more I work with this stuff, the more I have my suspicion that these are some kind of um, copper um, component rather than an iron component. But the more you work with this stuff, in order to get that red stuff to this color, because this came out of that batch, I basically took all, this, all these little crystals, ground them up into... And like dried them out as much as I could on top of the wood stove then ground them into a powder and put them in a little dish like this which I cannot fully recommend because the inside of this like that stuff just stuck to it and a lot of it's not coming off so I think it's interacting with the glaze on this pot but I put it in that and I slid the whole thing into the wood stove like in the actual fire chamber and let it sit there overnight. So it developed these interesting colors. These greens and yellows came to the surface. Took that stuff out. Powdered it back up. And then I'm left with this. Which is a much higher purity grade. Of the carbonate. Now this still has some of that red color in it. You just can't see it right now. Because there's so much white. That has taken. You know it's sort of taken over the color. Another thing is the. There's a little bit of your chalk that's going to get into your water. Doesn't matter how you filter it, some of it's going to get in. Because chalk is very slightly soluble in water. So if you're going to cook the stuff down, and I recommend cooking it down until you actually see crystals forming on top of the water. Like if you want to use the lye, don't use the egg test, don't use the feather test, don't use any of these silly little tests that people online have devised. Like just go ahead and boil it down until you see crystals forming on top. When you see crystals forming on top, then it's concentrated enough and you don't have to mess with pH paper. You don't have to do none of this at that point. It should be the right strength to just add it to your soap mixture and go. Now, I'm not an expert on making soap, so don't take my word on that. But it should be strong enough at that point to use it for anything you want to use it for. Because when it gets to that point and you cool it back off and you separate whatever liquor is off of those crystals in the bottom, that's going to be the most concentrated that you can get it. Um, and if you boil it down anymore, you're just going to have more stuff precipitate out and drop to the bottom. So when it gets to that level of concentration, like that's the concentration that you want for doing stuff with it. Um, if you continue to boil it off, make sure you use low heat, especially at the very end. Otherwise, this stuff's going to form like these little volcano looking things on the bottom of the pot. And it's going to become very hard. I definitely recommend removing it from heat before it dries all the way. Just because it's 100,000 times easier to clean up. And then if you want to dry it further than that, you can try and filter off some of the water. And then let it sit out in the air for a little while or maybe on mild heat. And then just go ahead and finish the drying process. If you want to calcine it to get the stuff then you have to add a lot more heat. Um, I don't recommend, like, this wasn't heated in a kiln. It's just heated in a wood stove, so I doubt this got over about 350 degrees C um, as a maximum. Uh, probably more in the range of 150 to 200 because the fire was dying down as the night went on, but I had it running pretty hot when I started. Um, there's... The stuff is very, very easy to calcine. Basically, all you're doing is cooking off that organic matter and burning that. So if the fire is hot enough that it'll catch a log when you toss it in, then it's hot enough to do this. You don't have to have any kind of kiln, any special equipment. You can do this over a campfire. You can do it in a wood stove. You can do it with a blowtorch if you want to get really just buck wild and crazy with it. But if you start with a blowtorch, then you're getting into the realm of you may start decomposing these chemicals into something else and gases are going to be released in very small quantities but um, you start releasing carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide in particular I would be worried about with that just there shouldn't be much sulfur in here but just a little safety note you're gonna decompose it and it's gonna start turning into things that are other than the thing that you want so just be careful adding too much heat um, and my pot should be clean enough. 
we're concentrating lye here. It's not like, and lye was the last thing concentrated in this pot. So I was going to go ahead and wash it out all the way and make it pretty again. But we're just doing the same damn thing. So I'm holding on to the camera with one hand. So this is going to be a little trickier than usual. Let me sit you down real quick. There. And I apologize ahead of time because I am not getting my tripod out for this part. So basically, all you're going to do is take your little pot. You're going to pour off some of your little water. And as far as those carbonate impurities I was talking about, the chalk will stay in the bottom of the bucket. So when you start getting down pretty low or when you're pouring this stuff back and forth you can kind of filter that off by just pouring the water off and make sure you don't get any of that residue in the bottom of the pot and when you pour off that's the easiest way to filter it rather than messing around with filter paper and stuff and then that guy goes on the wood stove with fire underneath it so as the water kind of vaporizes off of there it's also going to keep my house nice and hydrated and keep the air in here with a little more water in it so it's not so damn dry um so it serves really two purposes so i'm concentrating my line at the same time i am doing the whole what do you call it humidifying the house a little bit so it's not so bloody dry in here and that's pretty much all there is to that process. Now as that stuff cooks down, you'll get crystals on top. And you can scrape the first batch of them off um, once you get a pretty good layer. Most of that's going to be chlorides. Um, and they look basically like a sheet of ice. When they look like a sheet of ice, it's going to be mostly chlorides. You can scrape that off and toss it because it's just adding salt to your mixture basically. Um... The next group of salts that you're going to see floating is probably going to look like little tiny snowflakes. Uh, I don't know for sure if those are some of the carbonates that you want or not. But the general rule of thumb is the most soluble part of that is going to be potassium carbonate. Unless there's another impurity in there in a very small amount that's just more soluble. So um, once you get those chlorides out of there you're golden you're good to go on potassium carbonate and you could rest assured that you've got a fairly high concentration in there now as far as the exact percentage i don't know we'll get there and about 20 pounds of how many did i say yeah about 20 pounds of that lye water or 20 pounds of ashes that we used i think that was the number i gave you makes about half a pound to a pound of the the little crystals when they're all dried out and whitened so you can keep that in mind as a, a target to shoot for and i'll continue to purify these and as i get updates i will of course post them but i think that's going to be it for this video so if you like this kind of thing like subscribe i'm also making clay out there so there will be probably another video on that coming very soon and more on the soap project and just kind of thing and in case you're wondering, yeah, it's primitive tech. I'm using five gallon buckets that are obviously made from plastic because I haven't started manufacturing clay pots yet. So when I get to manufacturing clay pots, I'll replace some of these five gallon buckets. Deal? Okay.